All right, hello everyone. It's Mr. Punk Quest from Heavy Ball Unbound, and we are back with another rapid hit. Now, when I made the first one, I focused heavily on self improvement in one of my favorite games, but over the break time between posting the first one and beginning this one, I realized another cool thing the series can do for me. Rapid hit can serve as a really good excuse slash opportunity to give new games a shot or give games I fell off of another try. Cramming all that gameplay into a short amount of time will help me understand a game so much more compared to my usual strategy of going back to my safety games, God and Destiny, if the gameplay doesn't immediately click for me. And I don't think there's a better game to do this with first than Valorant. It's a really weird game for me because besides maybe Overwatch, it's one of the only games where I'm pretty deep into its competitive side but barely play the game. Not to say I didn't try, the entire summer of 2020 was dedicated to me trying to like the game, but I think I slowly realized that tax shooters either aren't for me or I just didn't give them enough of a shot. And I think one of the biggest reasons why was its gunplay. It was way too stationary for me. When I get into gunfights in any of the games I usually play, it's all about movement while shooting. But Valorant, on the other hand, is all about playing precise angles and head glitches. And the worst part of it all is trying to learn how to aim and position in normal pubs is basically impossible, especially now that the game is 2-3 to three years old and has an established player base. There is a fix, however. The deathmatch game mode. It works like free-for-all in COD with zero abilities. Perfect for someone trying to get comfortable with the game's gunplay. So for this next rapid hit, I'll be doing 50 games of deathmatch in Valorant. The main focus of this is to see if I can become competent enough at aiming in Valorant to maybe try heading back into the regular game modes. Because of that, and the fact that it's free-for-all and not team-based, I won't be counting the win-loss every 5 games like I did for the Destiny one. Instead, I'll only count my KD per game. I will, however, track my placements in the background and show the numbers of 1st, 2nd, 3rds, etc. all the way to last place that I get throughout the series at the very end. And of course, like the other rapid hit, every match will be shown either through clips of my good plays, things I want to specifically point out I did right slash wrong, or just through the scoreboard and a small showcase of me getting shit on. Anyways, I've procrastinated long enough. This is Rapid Hit Valorant Deathmatch. So. Even though I like the Phantom more, I decided that this would be a good time to try and get good with the Vandal. I mean, in the end, it didn't really matter what weapon I used, since I was still getting smacked around. But, once it started to warm up, I did manage a couple nice kills and a hilariously bad 3-piece, with two of them being the exact same person. I guess I can't ever escape the model for two spawns. Finally, I get another 3-piece, which could have been a 4-piece, honestly, if I understood in any way how the guns work in this video game. Final KD, 15-19. Game 2 wasn't very exciting besides these two kills. I just plainly couldn't get anything going, and it showed in every one-on-one -on -one gunfight I had. Final KD, 20-27. So I'm starting this game in the warm-up specifically because I don't understand how these two interactions could follow each other. Like, what did I do differently? Hopefully I find out by the 50th game because this was honestly driving me crazy when I was playing. Onto the actual match though, I spawn killed this poor Sky and rotate around to get another. I also got into a nice little groove around A-bomb. What I like most about these gunfights is that I'm actively aiming for the one-shot headshot and I'm giving myself more advantageous angles. I also get an absolute schnapper, for me at least, on this poor Omen. Final KD, 24-29. Little game sensitive to start off game 4, well more of a 50-50 guess, but it makes me look like I know what I'm doing, so I'm keeping it in. I also like the second gunfight because it's a clean little peek. During this match I spent a lot of time trying to figure out if the burst shot was the way to go, or if you're just supposed to fight the recoil long range, or just straight up only one tap. Was still trying to figure this out through honestly the whole entire match, uh, but both worked for me, so honestly, uh, who knows at this point. Seriously though, more gunfights like this and I might actually learn something by the end of this. Final KD, 24-20. I got another warm-up clip to start this game. I love the way the Spectre looks and feels in this game, but since I'm trying to better my Vandal shot, I really never got a chance to use it. So in the event that I do, aka the warm-up that almost never gets shown, I'm taking full advantage. Going into the full match though, I probably should've just stayed with the Spectre. Recovering from that, I get another double involving a spawn kill and an AFK. A little cheap, but honestly I need all the free kills I can get. Final KD, 22-25. Going into game number 6, uh, I really like this kill here. I don't know why exactly, it just looks super clean, and in my opinion it's good enough to directly point out. Other than that though, nothing else to show. Uh, this final kill is a best example of how terrible this game went. Final KD, 1827. Started off game 7 with a pretty cool set of kills. Uh, I get a long range snipe, and then bob and weave through the crates picking up more kills. Uh, honestly, I'm just so proud of my past self for not ego challenging for once in my goddamn life. Of course, as the game goes on, I do get back into my usual slumps, uh, but I gotta ask though, how did I not kill this guy? Like, I get I missed at first, entered the shots 1-5, to five, clearly missed me in gear. But I feel like I snapped back on them way before the other person did. I don't know, man. This this game, honestly, at this point, was still confusing the hell out of me. Final KD, 22-29. We're going right into the next game with some good long-range kills. I don't know why I was ADSing for these kills, but it, along with the burst shots, are the only reason that Brim didn't turn on me. Pretty much one life later, I get another set of kills with a little more spraying than necessary. I also get this kill on a knifer while I'm checking my ping, which is pretty funny as that would have been an instant death in COD. And here's another two piece to show that I might slowly be learning. Eight games in. I hold an angle on this guy that gives me the best odds and huh, I actually win the gunfight. Who'd have thought? Man, this was actually a packed game clips wise. Here's an almost four piece that only got ended because I suck at spraying. I also get a nice 1v2-ish situation here where I'm constantly rotating back and forth to get these two kills. I think the fact that my shot doesn't shake as much and I get both kills at different angles is showing some sort of improvement. Final KD, 24-18. Add it to the non-existent counter. To counter that spawn kill, here's me getting spawn killed by the same person three times. Perfectly balanced. 
besides one-off kills and this clip there really isn't anything good to show about this match i felt like i could never really get anything going and had to rely on lucky spawns and third party fights final katie 27 24 after struggling through this gunfight in the warm-up i get trash talk comp assaulted negged i don't know what to call it but because of that comment for the rest of this match along with showing the usual clips i'll also be showing every time i kill this phoenix because guess what i'm petty Anyways, starting off this match with a pretty nice shot, transfer double kill. Probably could have killed him a lot cleaner if I moved, but frankly, I'm just happy I had the kill. Shit on. Hork slammed. Absolutely dumpstered. Fucking trash can. Here's another double with some good burst control and angling. Forcing them to move to me gives me all the leverage in the gunfight. Good job, Pats me. Absolutely bodied. I still don't entirely understand the point of ADS in this game, but if I ever need to use the skill, at least I know I can rely on it. Fucking demolished. To end it, I go on a little spree around A-bomb. Something I definitely need to do more of is just holding down certain areas. I've always had trouble with that, but especially in a game like this where I'm not completely competent in my gunfights, this is definitely the best way to get more consistent kills. Final KD, way higher than Phoenix. 25-30. Also, uh, sorry to that Phoenix if you're being genuine. For game number 11, we finally get on the new map Lotus. And right off the bat, I get into a kinda interesting gunfight. Here, I have two players in front of me. One facing me, actively shooting me, and the other with their back facing me, shooting the other person. What I should have done in this situation with the benefit of hindsight, is start shooting the one that had already seen me. But since I was so nervous about winning head-to-head -head gunfights, I took out the other guy instead for a free kill. Which honestly sucks, because this could have easily been a two-piece, if I just focused on the harder kills first. A little bit later in the match, I went on a nice little kill spree, getting myself four kills, and snapping on the fifth, but still dying somehow. I also got way too bloodthirsty and Chase just ran into my own death. In the end, that was still my problem. I'm not playing slow enough and acting like I had the gun skill to compensate for that. Final Katie, 2020. A lot of game number 12 was me trying to climb out of the blunder I was being put in and failing. One thing I specifically want to point out is this 1v1 versus the Cypher. I get first shots off, but can see I'm in a real shit position to win, so I back up. But then my crosshair placement and reaction time just completely fail me for some reason, and I get gunned. Like, I don't even know what I was aiming at, his fucking kidneys? I bounce back with three dink headshots, uh, which slightly helps the fact that I've been getting shit on in every single gunfight for the past three minutes. Cleaning up this rat was also a big pick-me-up. However, single kills, or little pop-offs, kinda mean nothing in the grand scheme of things when you're still down by so goddamn much. Final KD, 1924. Starting in the warm-up, here's a three-piece with one of the funniest kills I've ever gotten in this game. Extremely high ping and the usual bad aim caused me to limp my way through this game, barely making it out. Final KD, 2029. While checking my pings and that was still lagging, I got four kills holding down a drop. Another reminder to future past me that holding down certain areas is absolutely the play for DM. Besides that play and this buzzer beater double dink, I couldn't get a single thing going for me this game, which led to me barely scraping a measly 20 kills with 23 deaths to go along with it to finish this match. Another very quiet game out of me. Honestly, at this point, I was just trying to reset my mental after four straight games of lag. I have a moment to myself behind this wall, praying to the only god I know that this dude would just get bored and quit shooting at me, and it ends up working. And like the mighty King Cobra, I sneak up behind my unsuspecting prey and third party for the two-piece. I hate playing like a rat personally, but I honestly understand why people do it now. And finally, here's another nice little two-piece with random recoil being the real saving grace here. Final KD, 1830. Another game, another third party double kill. I also managed four more kills around C-Long slash offense spawn. Besides that, extremely boring game. Final KD, 2221. In game number 17, I would like to welcome you to the worst gunfight in the history of deathmatch. Sure, I could blame it on the massive lag, but truthfully that would have gone exactly the same with 20 ping as well. And if that first clip didn't tell you how the game was going for me, this one definitely will. Final KD, 1818. For one of the first games in a while, I actually start off the match with a few gunfight wins, and another lucky 3 piece around A short slash cubby. These next 3 kills are interesting to me strictly because I was spraying for all 3. I don't understand why it was so accurate with the spray, when it usually never is, but I'll take it. Final KD, 1822. I got absolutely shit on for game number 19, so we're just gonna skip right through it. No excuses, I wasn't lagging or anything, I was just getting traded after every single kill. Final KD, 1826. So even though game number 20 starts off very rough, I pull off two alright kills, with one kill being earned through the patented preemptive flick method. I do that shit so often, I guess it had to pay off eventually. I also get another spawn kill, added to the non-existent counter, and a nice back-to-back -back long range and close range kill. Holding it together on 6 health in a dream, I barely steal this kill from someone top heaven, and show off my Shotzi-esque movement abilities by jumping sideways with a knife. I'll be waiting for my VCT contract. To cement my status as the greatest phoenix in the lobby, I turn on this brimstone and have to resist a cod half of my brain telling me to shoot the shit out of his body. My dominant reign was ended by the other half of the lobby that was quietly racking up kills while I killed the same sober for the 12th time in a row. Final KD, 2131. Starting off game number 21 with two kills, one of them being a burst fire kill, which I'm still not entirely sure is the most optimal way to shoot the Vandal. Even if it was probably unintentional because of the angle I came up from, you gotta love the character development shown in this gunfight. Patrolling around C window, I sweep up a whole bunch of lucky kills. Eventually the gunplay is gonna stick with me, but for these early-ish games, it's very rough. Even though this was arguably one of my better matches, we still ended the way we always do. Final KD, 2618. Real duality of man here for these three kills. I don't know how we can go from Spray and Pray to Dr. Dinkies and then back to Spray and Pray over a 10 second strip of gameplay. Honestly, I feel right at home here. Facing a scuff jumping enemy really makes me feel like I'm back in rank play, getting my SR rod by 4 stacks. 
I made that same cipher again in the exact same situation, killing one person and then them. Never expect a guy in a fucking trilby to get your trades, kids. This next little spree gave me trailer vibes for some reason. Maybe just because of the different ranges or with how fast they happen, something about it just makes you want to put up set behind it and add some sick edits. Too bad I'm not good enough for that. Viewer discretion is advised for this next clip. It wasn't supposed to be shown at all, but it randomly appeared in my premiere timeline, and every time I tried to delete the clip, it would just show back up again. Final KD, 29-24. Game 23 was pretty quiet to start. I kind of felt like I was running on autopilot until this three piece. I'm especially proud of my pixel perfect dinky shot, so for the final kill. I feel like I've been showing too many of my good plays for this, so here's me dying to the same omen four times before I finally kill him back. To say I was tilted here would be an understatement. Here's a nice little double to help me regain, and right. Of course, with a newfound hatred for all operator plays, I end the game with a KD of 33-33. This is kind of a weird China notice, but I feel like all my kills on Haven are in A lobby. Anyways, here's two more. And a three-piece from A tower. Now those may seem like pretty mid clips, but that's only because I literally did nothing else in this match besides stare at the respawn screen. Final KD, 1930. So, starting off game number 25 with three kills. Nothing weird about these three kills, nope. Seriously though, what is it with spawns in multiplayer games? Like how has no one been able to get them into a state that makes sense? And I'm not trying to say this in a derogatory way either. Like, I'd love to learn more about spawn logic, and honestly, I'm hoping some random dev watches this far into the video and will be willing to explain it to my baby brain. Because right now, for the past 12 years of me playing first person shooters, they have never made sense. Here's a clip of me killing a poor YYing Astra. Honestly, I know the feel. I've had to cut so many of my own YY deaths out of this series so far, and the same jet for the fourth time, along with killing these two at B Bomb. With the final kill of the spree being a pixel perfect headshot, the last half of this game is typical punk was gameplay though. Death, death, missed shot, and more death. Final KD, 3221. In one of the dumbest moves of my deathmatch career, I kill a guy B window and then just run for the heels instead of dealing with this guy right in front of me. Somehow though, I kill that guy, a random jet, and a poor chamber just trying to spawn in. This whole clip is honestly mind blowing to me with how lucky I got on both sprays. And apparently B window is my god spot because I get another 3 piece here later in the match. Once I left the safety of my tower though, I got pounded to dust. Final KD, 2530. Going into game 27, I knew this game was going to be good when I saw how kind the lobby was. I mean, allowing bathroom breaks is something you love to see. Going into the match though, I take a pretty stupid ego child to start it off and transition into two separate dinkies along the spawn hallway. Thanks to a lucky spawn, I go on a spree around spawn, managing to take out one, two, three people before finally being stopped. On the other side of the map, I get two kills on a troll and omen and a pretty nice long range phoenix heal top heaven. Continuing my run in the back spawn, I get a little dink, two extremely lucky sprays, and some more major dinkage. I'm not gonna lie, I was kinda locked in this game. I feel like my shot was straight, like I knew where everyone was coming from. I didn't feel tense in these gunfights. Due to all those factors, I ended up with a lead for the first time in this project's history. And this three piece right here definitely helped with that. Finally, I'm down to the last five kills. One, dink off spawn, poor chamber. Two, top heaven control. Three, AFK easy kill, but honestly I'll take it since Cypher's right on my ass. Four, mid window kill. One more kill is all I need. Finally, one lucky spawn kill secures my first win in the series. Final KD, 4022. Starting off game number 28 with an AFK 2 piece, setting me up for the perfect storyline of going back to back, leading into another lucky spray 2 spree. I mentioned this in the last game, but it really did feel like I was getting more comfortable in this game at this point. I was getting easy burst kills, predicting people pushing me, sound whoring even, which is something I never even do for COD, and popping dinkies, all without really thinking about it. I'm gonna be honest here. I'm only keeping this clip in because it's hilarious to me. Like unless that wall was bangable, there was no reason for that viper to peek. I almost get punished for YYing again straight off spawn, but luckily this person was a straight game 5 pun quit, so it was a pretty easy kill. In the end I put up a valiant fight, but I failed to secure the back to back. Final KD, 28-17. Rough start to this match because honestly Fracture sucks, but I manage an ankle shot 2 piece to try and dig myself out of this point hole. I go to my happy place on this map and finally start spraying. I honestly just love this little area around A-bomb. It's so active, but also has so many good hiding spots and angles that it's kind of easy to survive and thrive. Meanwhile though, on the other side of the map, uh, I continue my spree while getting a couple lucky sprays. Full disclosure, this is another one of those kills I'm keeping in because it's hilarious to me. Going back to the usual clips, here's a straight off the spawn double dink to end the usable clips for this match. Final KD, 28-20. Very hot start for game number 30, securing two headshots right off the bat. I know I've been quitting out spawns for this entire thing, uh, but this is just crazy. I'm just happy this dude is seemingly AFK because if this happened to me while I was actually playing, uh, I would be enraged. Feels like I'm only using my good gameplay again. So here's another clip of me throwing away an extremely easy kill on A-bomb. Like I knew Reyna was under me and they knew I was up there. But again, I let my cod instincts take over and just jumped at them. Obviously it didn't work out. I got a few more nice kills but sadly couldn't keep the momentum going from the previous matches and end with a final KD at 2016. I started this game off pretty poorly. But when I defaulted to my safe strategy, aka camping in one area and scoring kills of people walking by, I finally got something going. You know, some people say I'm still having this gunfight to this day. Moving away from that raw showcase of skill, here's a nice little two piece from different ranges. If I could figure out how to play like this for every gunfight, I'd be unstoppable. Sadly, that type of gun skills for a better player. Final KD, 2227. For game number 32, I learned that I can apparently only get kills around this side of the map. Either way, here's a little 4 piece around mid slash attacker spawn. And here's another screen, my second go to part of the map. I really like this little double take me and that KO did. 
and the partial turn on I got in that stage. All the sprees, however, add up to nothing because by the end of the game we end in 7th place and with a KD of 19 and 27. Not a whole lot of good gameplay to show here because it's one of the only times this entire test where I get a lucky spray and it works out. If you want a little taste on how this game was going for me, here's me waiting 10 plus seconds for an AFK guy to spawn in just so I can get a free kill. Like the lucky spray I got was also nice, but man. Final KD, 12 and 24. For game number 34, the enemy players take the name of the map a little too seriously and give me a good opportunity to work on my shot transfer and burst shooting. I go back to my favorite section of the map and go on a little bit of a tear, stealing kills through third partying, AFK, and really bad other snipers. And to finish the whole thing off, here's a lucky little turn on. I also kill the same Sova twice in the exact same spawn in the exact same way. Actually, continuing the Sova bullying, I absolutely outplay the Sova again in what I can only describe as Looney Tune shit. This was definitely the best game since the win, but we still only made it to 4th place. Final KD, 34-30. You know, my favorite thing about my skill level is how rapidly it can fluctuate match to match. Final KD, 17-27. Here's another rough game. Barely scraping by in last place, I do manage to pull off a disjointed little 3-piece, which single-handedly took me from 12th to 9th. It's also not much, but I wanted to point out this 1v1 against an opera, where I actually moved around instead of just standing there waiting to get repeaked. Progress is progress no matter how slow I guess, right? I bounced back pretty hard with a couple of lucky kills, but all I did was save my ass from getting bottom 5. Final KD, 23-25. I hit the game running in game number 37 with the Punquist special, which for those of you who don't know is me killing an AFK person and then fumbling around in a gunfight until you have to run away out of embarrassment. Then of course heading right into another gunfight. On reflection, I feel like I've been skipping a lot of these easy little two-pieces, so here's one of those. Honestly, this clip is a mixture of filler and just because I think it's a neat clip. And you can't stop me from showing it. Here's me getting absolutely shit on by KO, respawning, and then snapping on a Cypher straight off spawn, and then continuing that spree against a Sova in that same KO. Deathmatch spawns are wild. Final KD, 24-30. So we're back on the best looking map in the game, fight me, uh, where I get a couple of lucky dinks and some schnappers around A-bomb. Couple minutes later, I continue the dink apocalypse all the way to 7th place. Final K dink, I mean KD, 1917. Starting off game number 39 with some good centering, even if it doesn't entirely pay off. And you know, that's something I haven't really talked about in like 20 matches. Centering was one of the one things I was focusing on to try to improve in this challenge, and I knew it would be the hardest thing to get good at. With 5 kills left in a very lackluster game, I tried to lock in and get 3-piece before the harbor manages to finish the game. Final KD, 22-23. So I'd like to start off the beginning and the end with a question. Can you wallbang this? Is this a known spot? I've played a lot of matches on Xbox, I mean mostly DM but still, uh, and I've never been shot here until now. This is probably extremely situational, but a really cool spot that I learned of, assuming it's able to be replicated. Anyways, on actual gameplay, starting off with me hiding around B-bomb for a couple of easy kills. It's kind of weird to me how I was quietly slaying out this game. The problem, of course, is that none of it was flashy. Also, I just wanted to show this kill, because it's always fun killing rats. I finally finished off this game with a lucky stack triple that I'm honestly still confused about. Like, that second kill was pure cod timing. Final KD, 36-35 kicking off game number 41 with an easy two piece. I'm only showing this clip because I was happy with the movement and shooting. Like it wasn't G sliding or anything, but just moving it all and still hitting my shots is honestly character development to me. Moving on, here's another two piece. And I think at this point in the test, I've sort of settled into a certain playstyle for DM. It's mostly run and gunning, hoping the recoil works with me, and trying to keep my aim centered. I'm still getting more kills on average, but I'm still only placing 5th through 12th. Final KD, 26-32. For game number 42, I'm going to show the warm up for the first time in a while, and I think I made a mistake because I really like the Phantom. I only started using it in warm-ups like 5 games ago, but at this point it feels so natural to me. Honestly, I expect a rapid hit 50 Phantom DM games uh, in the near future. However, just because I should talk to Vandal doesn't mean I still don't appreciate it though. I think it's just a can't eat chicken every night sort of thing. Is that a thing? In fact, maybe I should should talk to Vandal more. Here's me choking the furriest 4 piece of my Valorant career. Game pretty much fell off after that though. Final KD, 18-13. Ah, the AFK player. It truly is the best confidence booster a player can get. I don't think I could have gotten these next two kills without starting strong on someone who left to feed their cat Cheeto mid-match, but sadly there weren't enough AFKers in the lobby to help me win the game, and I ended with a final KD of 1822. Game number 44 isn't going great so far. Uh, I managed a double long shot dink, but get angled out by a gimmicky sky. I was just off my game this entire match. I had a hard time finishing kills, and even the lucky sprays didn't feel as stable as they did before. Well, as stable as lucky sprays could be. I tried to put up a fight for the last few kills, but sometimes it's better to just get the beating over with and move on. Final KD, 1826. Starting off this game very chaotically. We got some spams, we got some snipes, some good old third partying, and of course some more spammy to finish the spree. Continuing this carnage, I get extremely lucky in a standoff thanks to a clueless chamber. I don't think that was a person. Honestly, it looked more like an AI trying to learn Valorant. So in other words, I finally found someone on my level. To finish off my spree, I do get a quad kill on a hip firing brim. Somehow I continued this continuing with another spree on people who are either facing away from me or walking into my reticle so I can dink them. Somehow that ends with me getting a penta. Honestly, if it wasn't for an extremely cracked jet and an astro slash fade that I don't ever remember seeing in this match, I probably would have snuck another dub. But instead I choked and ended with a KD of 30-15. The punk was pendulum wings again, leaving me in a game of catch up. When watching these back, I always feel bad when I default camp an area for free kills, but remembering back to how I felt during the match, I don't feel bad at all. Nothing else worthwhile from this game. Final KD 27-27. This game sucked. 
I was lucky to get any kills, and every kill I did get was traded instantly. Here's one of the only little streaks I could actually go on. I basically camped in the back area whenever I spawned in, and that single-handedly gave me 75% of my kills. I was so tilted I was ego challenging every gunfight I could, just to hope to win. One thing I will gas myself up on though, is that even when I'm having an atrocious game, I can still squeak out 20 plus kills. That's not something I could say 46 games ago. Final KD 25-32 the best thing to do after a bad match is to completely forget about the terrible results. And plays like this definitely help you forget your own bad plays. Sorry for calling you out, Brim. Going into the actual match, I run through multiple people who seem to be dazed and confused about the game they're playing and why they're even here. Here's another kill spree that leads to a nice penta. But one thing I kind of want to point out that I noticed was my movement. I wasn't just walking in straight lines. I was hugging walls and trying to cut off extra angles to shoot me from. I mean, I was still probably doing it wrong, but I thought it was a neat evolution of how I played this game. Or maybe I'm just getting too reflected since we're almost done. Is that an intended line of sight, Treyarch? This next fight against Harbor is like fighting a Game 5 Punquist. Not to say I wouldn't do the exact same thing in that situation, though. I honestly want to know how many streaks I got during this test that started on an AFK player. I tried my absolute hardest to get one more win for the series, tightened my aim, focused my mouse, and of course, took the easy kills. Uh, but I ended up playing too passively and let the wind slip through my fingers yet again. Final KD, 35-21. Starting off the second to last game with a kill that never should have worked. Shout out to bad habits from other games. This was another game of Traitor Ant. I basically couldn't get a kill without dying to another person. Here's basically the only streak, if you could even call it that, I went on during this game. Final KD, 22-22. On to the last game. Now on a better channel, with a better player, this final match probably would have been a banger of a game. Maybe having me piecing the opposition using everything I've learned, or even coming back from the jaws of defeat to seal another victory. But this isn't that kind of series, and I'm not that kind of player. By the end of the match, I wasn't playing for a podium spot, but a chance to not hit last place on the penultimate match of the test. With 5 kills left and 3 kills between me and 11th place, I squeak out a couple more kills to safely secure 11th place. Final KD, 1736. Alright, conclusion time. This one was hard. First off, I think I should have done 100 games for this test. Mainly because 45 games in, I kind of realized I still don't fully understand how the Vandal works. On the other hand though, only doing 50 games kept me from feeling kind of burned out, and in my opinion, made me want to play the game more after the test. Getting kills on the tax shooter genre is always satisfying, and when you're locked in, even if it's only for like 4 kills, you feel godlike. Add on to that the typical SD style clutch potential from normal pub slash comp, and I think I can finally see myself getting over the learning hump and into this game further. And because of that, I want to do a sort of checkup rapid hit sometime in the future, playing the swift play mode, so I don't have to look through hundreds of hours of me spectating my teammates for 13 rounds. I have a shit ton of other ideas planned for rapid hit first though, so this won't be happening anytime soon. Which honestly might be a good thing, because it gives more time off camera to learn how the goddamn vandal works. And speaking of my gameplay, to rate it here real quick before we go into the more analytical, I use that loosely, part of the conclusion, I'd give myself a solid 4 out of 10. I definitely think I improved over my 2020 gameplay, but improving from a baseline of 0 isn't exactly hard. Either way, it's only up from here. Anyways, like I mentioned before, I kept track of all my placings during this test and graphed it all out. Doing some quick math shows me that my average placing is 4th-ish place, with 7th being the most common, which is way above what I expected from this test. I thought I already knew my ceiling and floor. 6th place and 10th place respectively, but seeing that I was selling myself short is a really big confidence booster, and I even snuck in a win somehow, which is honestly all I was looking for going into this. In the end, Valorant and tactical shooters might not be able to pull me fully away from my more arcadey shooter roots, but I've definitely gained more of an appreciation for them, and I'm honestly looking forward to improving myself in them during my free time. P.S. I know this is coming out super late, but if you need to solve a one trick for your premier team, hit me up. I'm a solid wood tier player who's ready to shock the world. Anyways, this is Mr. Punkless from Heavy Moonbound, signing out, I'll see you next time.